Friction is the force that opposes the motion of an object and acts parallel to the surface with which an object is in contact. The friction is calculated by taking the product of the coefficient of friction and the normal force. The coefficient of friction is something that is specific to the interaction between one object and its surface and it can be calculated by taking the ratio of the frictional force between those two objects and the normal force that the surface exerts on that object. Since it is a ratio it will not have any units and the values for this coefficient of friction are typically between 0 and 1. So in a typical example as we have here a 100 kilogram object with an applied force attempting to move the object to the left in order to start this object moving it is first necessary to overcome the static friction also known as the static friction maximum fs max which can be calculated by taking the product of the static friction coefficient and the normal force the coefficient of static friction has been given as 0 0.4 the normal force calculated as 980 which means that our static friction maximum is 392 newtons. Now, static friction and all friction is a reactive force, meaning that it only acts to counter the force that is attempting to move the object. So that means that the static friction maximum is the maximum frictional force that this object will exert before it starts moving. So in a typical example, if the applied force was zero, there is no attempted motion. So since the applied force is zero, the frictional force is also zero since friction only attempts to oppose motion. In a second example, if we now said that that applied force was 200 newtons, we can now very clearly see that there is a force of 200 newtons that is attempting to pull the object towards the left but as we can see, that 200 Newton force is not great enough to overcome the static friction maximum, which means that static friction maximum reacts by only exerting a 200 Newton frictional force, the result of which being that the net force on this object is zero and the object does not move and it has therefore opposed motion once again. As we can see, this applied force could be any value between 0 and 392 before this object would move. The applied force would have to be greater than the friction maximum, static friction maximum, in order for this object to be moving. The reason why the static friction is generally higher than the kinetic friction is because the two surfaces tend to form a cold weld in which the molecules of their surfaces overlap with each other and essentially stick together like two pieces of sandpaper that are overlapping. But once the applied force has exceeded the static friction maximum, in this example I'm using an applied force of 400 newtons, once that has happened we can now say the object is in motion. As soon as the object is in motion, static friction no longer applies. So the only friction that now applies is known as kinetic friction, which can be calculated by taking the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is slightly less than that of static friction, which is 0 0.3 in this case, multiply by the normal force of 980 to find that the kinetic friction is 294 newtons. We know that this Frictional force always opposes motion, acts in the opposite direction and parallel to the surface. And then the final thing that we can see here is that this frictional force does not stop the object from moving because we have an applied force that is greater than the kinetic friction, which in this case means that this object has a net force that is acting on it of 106 newtons.